dawn of the last century, America had oil wells being drilled, but refineries were in short supply, and gasoline was precious. Our forefathers developed the flywheel engine. It'll run on very, very little fuel by using the kinetic energy in that flywheel that's spinning. And it only has to use fuel for very few strokes, very few power strokes. This engine here was developed in 1898. The engine itself is 1901. 1815, running a uh, cane grinder. They're actually making syrup, teaching people how to do that. Notice how the engine just hits every few licks, and that flywheel's doing the work. One of the interesting things about the flywheel engines is their technology could be developed by the generation today because that spinning wheel can also be tapped to uh, produce electricity. I'll show you how it. One of the things the old timers didn't do, uh, probably not because they didn't think of it, they just didn't need to do it, it's no great observation on my part, uh, was to turn these wheels into generators, which could be done today. Uh, if I was a young man today, I'd develop a, this out, or at least try to, where you would embed the wheels or simply lay copper studs into the wheel and now you've got an armature all you need is to overlay on the outside with uh, a housing of wire or with individual wires coming down into your capacitor now you've got a uh, your stator and now you've got a generator right there and that would be free electric power coming off of this. Now on your larger engines they'll take this oil and they'll run it down as it drips down into a chamber and actually re-refine the oil or clean it up and pump it right back up into the oil system. And if we were designing one today we'd do that on the smaller engines as well. You see it's almost totally silent. Starting up a big boy over there. If you ever see these leather belts in short sections that are riveted together, that's buffalo hide. Buffalo is extremely strong. I ran tractors that still had buffalo hide uh, engines to run the water pump and radiator. But they, they have to be riveted together in sections. 1915 Fairbanks Morris running an air compressor. Remember, all this was designed in 1915. If we laid that box out flat where the water is running, it would almost be a sluice box for gold mining. 1916 Fairbanks Morris Diesel used to run an ice plant. More about that later. There was in its heyday in an operation at the ice plant. Before World War II, every community wanted an ice plant because you would uh, take ice from the ice plant and you would uh, put that in your ice box to keep your goodies cool. Now I've showed you an ice plant. Now here's how the ice tongs work. You take your block of ice from the ice plant and as you lift it, it grasps the ice and then you take it to your ice box. 
Now that rotating shaft is the cam shaft. It's opening and closing the valve and taking exhaust. And it's also operating the magneto right up here. The magneto is providing the electricity for the spark. Some of these engines are still being run overseas in remote regions. They're low tolerance engines, meaning that the, uh, the piston that's going in and out there is very loose in the sleeve. And they consume uh, oil is, is dripped down continuously. And rather than the steel parts wear out, you just use the oil for your seal. really ingenious method of saving fuel because they, they use very little. Pumping water, that's what most of them did. They still do. Now this is a 1904 Olin engine. These were exported all over the world and it's doing what it did back then in 1904 and that is pumping water and these brought uh, the undeveloped world at that time water to uh, grow crops and start to feed themselves under a uh, bread means peace plan where America gave the ability of other nations to feed themselves. Bread means peace simply means if they can feed themselves there's that many less wars. That was the idea. Today, of course, we have a middleman. The, we give money to the United Nations, and uh, the United Nations skims it off and, you know, keeps dictators in power. So somehow we've got to get back to just giving direct. 1919. And there's the cooling. Ton Fairbanks Morse. Pumping water. Now, this is a snow engine. There's still several of them out there today that are still working. They're used as backups now for some of that pesky, unreliable uh, equipment that they put out, you know, those diesel and uh, turbine engines. This is what I was showing you before. This is the camshaft for the engine. And as it turns, it opens and closes the valves. So there you go. A 1914 engine, they're still being used today.